All right, this is chapter three, American Born Chinese. The morning after the dinner party, the Monkey King issued a decree throughout all of Flower Fruit Mountain. All monkeys must wear shoes. The Monkey King also ordered that he not be disturbed. He spent his days training. He locked himself deep down in the inner bowels of his royal chamber, where he studied Kung Fu more fervently than ever. He spent his nights meditating. He ate and drank nothing. After 40 days, he achieved the four major disciplines of invulnerability. Discipline 1, invulnerability to fire. Discipline 2, invulnerability to cold. Discipline 3, invulnerability to drowning. Discipline 4, invulnerability to wounds. After another 40 days, he achieved the four major disciplines of bodily form. Discipline 1, giant form. Discipline two, miniature form. Discipline three, hair into clones. Discipline four, shapeshift. Look, our king emerges from his royal chamber. Yay, we can once again frolic under his protection. Your majesty looks different somehow. Sire, on the first night of your seclusion, the winds carried this down from heaven. A new haircut? Notice, this notice is a mistake. Monkey King, you are hereby convicted of trespassing upon heaven. Your sentence is death. Report immediately to the underwater palace of Ao Jun, Dragon King of the Western Sea, for your execution. This Monkey King it speaks of no longer exists, for I have mastered the twelve major disciplines of Kung Fu and transcended my former title. I shall now be called the Great Sage, Equal of Heaven. Would your majesty like a banana? Yummy banana! Sire, where are you going? To announce my new name to all of heaven. Those shoes must be worn on your, on your feet, little one. Aww. Ao Kuang, Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, was the first to receive the great sage as a visitor. Ah, the infamous Monkey King. I've been anxiously awaiting your arrival, though you're a bit taller than, I was, than I'd imagined. My apologies for not sending someone to arrest you in person, but frankly, none of the gods wanted to go anywhere near your mountain. Nothing personal, we just aren't particularly fond of fleas. Now let's get this over with and done with, shall we? Guard? Sir, this execution is no longer necessary. What? Impressive parlor trick, little monkey. I am not a monkey. Heh <laughs> you're <laughs> not a monkey? Hee <laughs> hee. I have mastered 12 disciplines of Kung Fu. I am now the great sage, equal of heaven. Ha ha ha. The Dragon King needed some convincing. The great sage decided to perform him for him the discipline of giant form. Ha ha ha. The Dragon King was convinced. As a parting gift, the Dragon King gave the great sage a magic cudgel that could grow and shrink with the slightest thought. The great sage then visited Lao Tzu, matron, patron of immortality. Ha ha ha. Yama, caretaker of the underworld. <laughs> and the Jade Emperor, ruler of the Celestials. <laughs> All of them needed convincing. For Lao Tzu, the great sage performed the discipline of the shapeshift. For Yama, the discipline of hair into clones. And for the Jade Emperor, he demonstrated the wonders of his new cudgel. Soon after, the gods, the goddesses, the demons, and the spirits gathered before the lion, the ox, the human, and the eagle, emissaries of Tsiyotsu. Please, you must ask him to do something. This monkey will be the death of us. Tsiyotsu means he who is. We will relay your request. What's my name? The great sage, equal of heaven. What's my name? The great sage, equal of heaven. What's my name? The great sage, equal of heaven. Little monkey, where does your anger come from? I am not a monkey. Silly little monkey. You were saying, I created you. I say that you are a monkey. Therefore, you're a monkey. You are mistaken. I was born of a rock created by no one. It was I who formed you within that rock. Prove it. I am Tsiyo Tsu. All that I have created, all, all of existence forever remains within the reach of my hand. You I have created, therefore you can never escape my reach. Watch me. Ha! Too easy! 
the great sage flew with as much fury as he could muster. He flew past the planets and the stars. He flew past the edges of the universe. He flew through the boundaries of reality itself. <laughs> there at the end of all that is, the great sage came upon five pillars of gold. Never one to miss out on the chance for recognition, the great sage carved his name onto one of the pillars. I just threw, flew through the boundaries of reality itself, and where was your ever-present reach? Nowhere. Ha! All the gods I've encountered, you are by far the most pitiable, pit, pitiable. Now, get out of my sight before I make you recite my name until your tongue bleeds. Come closer, little monkey, and take a look at my hand. The five pillars of gold you found at the end of all that is, those were the five fingers of my hand. Silly monkey, you were never, uh, never out of my reach. You only fooled yourself. Walk with me. I am Tsiyo Tsu. I was, I am, and I shall forever be. I have searched your soul, little monkey. I know your most hidden thoughts. I know when you sit and when you stand, when you journey and when you rest. Even before a word is upon your tongue, I have known it. My eyes have seen all your days. Where did you think you could hide from me? Where can you flee from my presence? I am in the heights of heaven, in the depths of the underworld. Even at the end of all that is, my hand is there, holding you fast. It was I who formed your inmost being, I who knit you together in the womb of that rock. I made you with awe and wonder, for wonderful are all of my works. I do not make mistakes, little monkey. A monkey I intended you to be, a monkey you are. Please accept this and stop your foolishness. I don't care who you say you are, old man. I can still take you. Tsiotsu <sighs> buried the Monkey King under a mountain of rock and set a seal over him to prevent him from exercising Kung Fu. The Monkey King stayed there for 500 years. <laughs>